Well, good morning and thank you for joining us uh, today. We're live with co-working um, and we are so excited um, that you all have joined us. And uh, what we're doing right now is we're setting up um, everything so that people will be able to take advantage of um, all of what we have been experiencing here at Red Worldwide. Some of us have been experiencing for the longest time, um, the ability to uh, have access to such um, an amazing amount of content. And we want to make that available to um, our audience. And so um, people have asked, you know, how do we get access to this? You know, we want to participate, you know, and it's kind of hard to get into Zoom. And so what we did was this, this take it live um, and we're making it available in many different environments so that people can have access to it um, on a daily basis. Well, today is Thursday, and on Thursdays, we talk about everything um, that has to do with artificial intelligence, um, media, uh, um, AR, VR. Um, uh, we also talk about, you know, uh, the metaverse and all of these other different facets of technology that people may not normally be using in their businesses, but that can be used to not just build a business, but actually make the business more profitable, fix it so that you don't have to uh, work as hard because you can employ technology to do things that you may be using people to do and use the people resources for things that only people can do. So we're going to talk about that today. And I want to kind of start off and then I'm going to pass the mic um, to uh, one of our um, uh, contractors that's working with us, who runs her own company, uh, who is um, very knowledgeable about this particular area of business and how we can utilize it to create um, opportunities for our companies. With that said, um, let's just talk a little bit about how we use at Red Worldwide um, artificial intelligence. So we've been using artificial intelligence since our inception, uh, since 2017, uh, before people really understood that there was a such thing as AI. Our company has been uh, involved in several um, processes that actually are undergirded by artificial intelligence. And it has assisted us in being able to provide uh, services to a lot more people with just such a small team. So let me give you an example of how we use artificial intelligence, and then um, we'll pass the mic uh, to Javon Freeman, who can kind of see what that might look like for other companies and, and you personally as you're starting a company. Um, our company uh, is... Uh, founded on the concept of providing education to business owners. And so we are an educational support services company, and RED is an acronym for Research, Educate, Develop. The first component of what we do is research. And in doing research, um, we often will have to do research for companies to find out or to help them find out whether or not their ideas are feasible. You know, they're trying to go into the market. They want to make sure they're making a decision. Some of people that have gone into business and worked with us, they spent their life savings starting a company and they wanted to make sure that it was probable that they were going to be successful. And so in order for us to get some of the information that we've had to get to make sure they had, you know, the ability to make a good decision, we had to play AI. And sure, we could have used people to do all of that research, but it would have been very expensive. And it could also have been a situation where they would have to have wait, uh, waited a long time. Feasibility studies take time and proof of concept, you know, you, you'll need a lot of information so you can get that proof of concept. And in order for you to have just the bare minimum of information for you to know what bare, your, um, what your could could be out there in the community, it may cost you, you know, quite a bit. So what we're doing is trying to make sure that people don't have to um, spend money, you know, um, that they could, you know, really be utilizing in other places in their business. So we absolutely have used AI um, in a way to 
provide the research. It goes and it searches the databases for us. It looks on the uh, census uh, data websites. It goes to the Department of Labor's website and it'll pull, you know, the um, numbers and tell us, you know, different things. It will actually go out and scrub the internet for information that, you know, is credible because we're only having it look for credible sources, you know, um, to provide the information and we tell it where to go a lot of times. And so it's really important to us to make sure that we're doing that. Tony, I see your hand raised. <clears throat> really quick, I have my, uh, one of my team members, Kathleen from Texas on here. I just want to introduce you to her. Hi, Kathleen, how are you? <laughs> Great to meet you, glad to see you on. <laughs> yeah, okay. hi, I, I've listened to one of your um, sessions before, so I'm just listening in and learning today. Oh, wonderful, thank you so much. Okay. Well, it's good. I mean, we love it when people bring guests and uh, we are excited, you know, for you to be on. Feel free to raise your hand and ask questions uh, because we, you know, that's what co-working is about. Um, we try to position ourselves so that we have kind of an open atmosphere and people feel comfortable asking their business questions. So as we're going along today, we're talking about AI. And so you jump in if you have a question because this is where you're going to get an answer today. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, so we use, the, we use it for research. We also use it for education. A lot of the times we need to be able to put together um, documents quickly. And uh, so our team, uh, I'll tell them, hey, I need to put together this information. This is where I need you to go get it from. We pay for, you know, certain services that uh, provide us that information quickly and give it to us with the sources so that we are able to cite where we got it. Uh, we scrub the internal revenue code a lot of times to provide information to our clients who are looking to see, you know, how they could um, take advantage of certain tax um, incentives or other things of that nature. Um, we actually scrub the commercial code of different uh, uh, states through our AI components to grab information for clients when they're looking, you know, can my company do this? I'm in Texas, you know, can I do it here? Can I also do it in Delaware? You know, so we, we gain that information from credible sources and the AI will go and get it for us, you know, and so we'll share which particular pieces of AI we use um, on a later uh, podcast. But today we're going to open the floor for Javon Freeman to jump in and share with us. Javon, are you ready? Are you with us? Okay, I think I lost her video. Give me just a second. Um, there she is. There she comes. Okay. I'm here. Hi, everyone. My name is Javon Freeman. I am CEO and founder of Divine Lux Properties, an AR and VR solutions um, company. Um, today, I am going to go over with everyone um, the highlights when it comes to AR and VR as well as the benefits of integration for your business. Um, just to start out, I've been in the VR and AR industry for almost three years, will be three years in the month of August. And I have had the opportunity to work with companies um, regarding mostly um, Meta and a few other names to develop for their companies regarding VR and AR. So that's just a bit of information for me so far three, four, three years in. I am happy to be here, happy to be able to see the growth and innovation. I'm also going to give you today the benefits of using AI to produce these um, environments and experiences as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and get to it. So when we, when we talk about um, AI and VR and and AR, we are talking about newer industry things. These things have been in the industry. Of course, VR has been a thing for decades, but recently it has gained critical acclaim and things of that nature with movies such as Ready Player Me and things of that nature, showing that people, what the potential experience could look like. And of course, that, that, that kind of pushed a boom when it came to VR and AR on on more of a not so industry standard um, way. So with that being said, you see there's um, their headsets related to HTC Vive, 
Um, you most most people know mostly about the MetaQuest 2 and the MetaQuest 3 and the MetaQuest Pro. That is the standalone that um, allows you to be in these VR and AR ev events as well as environments. So just to get a little bit more in depth with you on um, the VR and Metaverse experience. So, so far since, um, since 2022, um, and this is based on um, EarthWeb and a uh, global metaverse market. 61, 61.8 billion people have integrated into metaverse, and it is slated to reach 426 um, billion by 2017. So, I mean, 2027. So, it is still, it is still moving. Um, currently, um, it is seeing more than 400 million people monthly as far as active users. So things are moving fairly quickly in that direction as far as having, as far as a benefit um, in putting your business or integrating your business into the metaverse. And when it comes to that, notice in 2020, there was a lot of changes as far as people going remote and not really interacting with businesses that are mostly brick and mortar, meaning out, out and about companies versus companies that are virtual or um, remote. So with that being said, a lot of people went in and saw the benefits of potentially getting to a demographic of people that they would not normally see. I mean, 400 billion people is a lot of people to see in a place that doesn't necessarily have a brick and mortar business, a brick and mortar building, <laughs> but it's a demographic that who's seeing, I mean, unless you are well-to-do, high up already in ranking in the industry, in whatever industry, you're not seeing 400 billion people. So there's a bill there. There is yes. Tony already said 400 billion. Yes, 400 billion people have integrated in the in the metaverse, and it's slated to get bigger and and better because companies are now multi billion dollar companies are now seeing the benefit of having a presence there, even though it's not a physical place. It can be so immersive there. You will you can feel you feel like you're actually there. Just for example, yesterday we spoke. Um, about the Red Worldwide office um, that that uh, we built a basically a virtual brick and mortar building to potentially throw classes, put classes on in there, and and of course integrate Red Worldwide into this place where she can so that they can be able to hit this demographic of people that of course you would not necessarily see out there. So there is a benefit. <laughs> there is a benefit. But with that being said, we also talk about AI. So with AI, you know, there there since there are um since since there are several at this point AI programs and software and things of that nature that have been implemented and created, artificial intelligence is probably next door to metaverse <laughs> like they if, if anything i would say they're cousins uh because you can use artificial intelligence nowadays to pro to produce anything we've done we've done stru company structure i've done children's books i've done all these different things that 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 i didn't even think would be possible especially in a short time frame it cuts your pretty much cuts your time in half when it comes to producing especially company structure i i'm in process of um, launching a website right now and i was able to get the structure the pricing the subscription how this is going to be set up how it's going to work and how it can even market how we can market it to where we can get to the necessary audience so there's a lot of benefits to integrating into the metaverse and then also using AI to le or leverage AI to be able to um, to be able to push your business forward and and get things going a lot faster versus you know you're doing it doing it on your own I would say yeah. I can I stop you just for a second um, quick question 
Okay, so I saw a couple of people in the chat and I also, I had this question. So what could that look like for a person who is maybe in a service-based business like insurance or real estate? You know, how would they, how could they leverage the metaverse? And I know we're going to be talking more about AI today, but I really wanted to, since you, since you went there, I really mm -hmm. wanted to kind of bring that out because I see Tony, he asked the question, how, you know, how can we get to people in the metaverse if we're selling a, a service like that? You know, how do we productize our services in the metaverse and what kind of um, virtual environment, you know, could we have there to be able to host um, maybe a session where people can learn about what we do? Well, well, so far from our from my experience with um, other business owners in the metaverse, there's people that have that there's people that have um, law firms. There are people that have colleges that have integrated into the metaverse. Like for example, Morehouse College has integrated into the metaverse and, and is actually is actually having its students that don't necessarily want to go onto campus to be able to do school in the metaverse phys in physical avatar in the um, app engage um there i i have uh, made connections with other um businesses like there i know someone that has a um a product company that that is for natural hair she integrated into the metaverse and put her store in there and there um, and was able to um, have it set up where people could click on the virtual item and they can purchase the item on her website. Um, so it is different things that can be implemented de depending on your services. The people are already there. So if they see that you have a insurance company or an insurance business per se that in the metaverse and you're in one of these platforms all you would do is do exactly what you do you know is market it you know put yourself out there and explain to them or or market yourself as okay we are at this brick and mortar location but we're also located in engage and here's the code where you can access our engage um virtual world you can um engage on your phone you can engage on the on the on your computer, and then if you don't, if you have a headset, you can also go in there virtually. So a lot of these um, companies that have virtual worlds set up already, they have a way for you to be able to access them from all aspects of technology, mobile, computer, and headset. So it's 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 the same it's the same concept. For example, I'll use. I'll use me as a, an example. So with Divine Lux Properties, I have offices for Divine Lux Properties in virtual worlds, and I also have properties that are, are virtual as well. Like for example, um, I did a contract for a claim development company. They have, um, they have a, um, well, they, they sell, I'm sorry, I'm losing my train of thought, excuse me they sell tiny homes. So they wanted a virtual experience to show the floor plans of their um their of their tiny homes. So me and my partner built them out and they were able to get a virtual experience to potentially bring customers to or also show on their website. So it just depends on, you know, how they how you want to go about it. You can integrate easily. Like if you have a building outside, that same replica of that building can be taken into the metaverse and be built out and you can have it set up so you have a presence. Most of the time with some companies, they don't even have any um they don't have any they don't have the resources like headsets and things like that even in place to even be able to do it, but they want presence there because of the demographic of people. So how you get in is you find whichever one or you speak with someone that's qualified to give advice on where to go and how to do it. And though you walk through the process, you are um your, for example, how we do it, we view what your what your building looks like, and if you have an idea of how you want to execute it in a different direction, we do that as well, and then we just build it, 
we launch it, we do a launch party, or we do an event or a TED Talk or something in the area so people know that you're there. And from there, the traffic is is literally going to come because it, it's, a, it's already a market there for it. Thank you for that. I really wanted to make sure because, you know, giving people the information but not really explaining it to them to tell them how sometimes can lead them to still feel like, okay, this is not possible for my company. It's but very possible. It's, it's very possible. It's, it's, <laughs> I can, I not, can attest to it. It's not hard because if you think about it, if you want to go the virtual headset, um, the virtual headset way, the what you would spend on the headset, what I spent on the headset, my headset cost 16 hundred dollars okay initially my headset cost around five my old headset cost about five hundred dollars each of those headsets since i've integrated have paid for themselves more than once because of the demographic of people that <laughs> that i that are in the headset and they see a need for it you know see a need for business there so the growth is there the 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 audience is there you just have to get in and a lot of people have trouble with the getting in aspect but when i tell you it's super simple especially if you're connected and you have someone that already knows how to do it it's it's a no-brainer it's it it literally you what can't... you're saying is is that we have someone that knows how to do it so we can go to the to divine Lex properties to get us a, some assistance there okay so uh in the, for the sake of time can you jump in and tell us a little bit about ai tell us how we can use ai to um assist us because a lot of people on the line are solo practitioners um we are working from home or working in a small office um we don't have a staff maybe we have one one person is our assistant. And when I say we, I'm just kind of showing you the avatar of the companies that you have available on the line or people who are going to watch this later. You know, a lot of us are, you know, small shops. And so what is it that we can do or have the AI do that will help us to do business better? Well, I mean, there, there are, when it comes to AI, AI it, it is all in the tool that you use. Basically, compared to what it was six months ago, it has grown leaps and bounds to be able to do so much. Uh, I work on AI on a daily basis. I have, like I stated, I've done structure for companies. I've done, um, I've done virtual experiences where I say, okay, I would like to build a, um, I would like to build a city, and in that city, I would like to have an event. That's a TED Talk. And I would like to be able to put, you know, have it look as futuristic as possible. Can and, you show us something? I um, mean, yes. there's something you can show us so that we'll see, we can put kind of put our eyes on this thing. So I'll go ahead and do this in front of you. So I'm going to go to an AI website and I'm going to type in a prompt and then you'll see what the what the prompt brings up just to give you an example. What's a prompt? Some of us don't know. <laughs> A prompt is what you tell AI to do for you in, in great detail so that it can produce um, the product that you're looking for. Ultimately, it can take a couple of tries, but if you're detailed enough, it, it will produce it most likely on this on the uh, first try. So that's just example what it is. I'm going to share my screen. And you'll be able to see that um, I almost have exhausted some of these AI. Some of these AI websites have a limit. Yes, some of the a lot of them are free. Yes, a lot of them are free. Um, some of them have like an up sale, up charge type thing. But this one particularly that I'm using, they allow you to prompt AI 15 times a day, and then they also have a second party um, part of the site where you can do it as many times as as you want. So I will. This is what I'll do. I will go to. I have to have so many windows. I'm, I'm happy I haven't shared my screen yet because. I am virtual, virtually my, my computer is, is a mess, <laughs> but I am, I'll, I'm going to go and grab. Okay. So I'll do it this way. I'll do it on. I'm going to use a Microsoft designer and co-pilot. Okay. I'm putting that in the chat, by the way, Microsoft designer. Okay, and then and both of these are free. Yes, they are. They are. Um, let me see. And just give me one moment. I'm still pulling everything up here. It's not what I was looking for. 
Okay, while she, while she's getting set up, um, mm-hmm. the the interesting thing about you know when you choose to use AI in in a way that is meaningful for your company, um, you begin to really see you know the results, and it is actually something that's kind of um, I want to say. Um, contagious because you know other people see what you're doing and they start asking you how are you able to produce that so fast and how do you get out these free ebooks to people you know about certain things you know um in such a i mean just a quick way you know? and so what we've done is we have a certain amount of content and that content will drop it in the ai and say okay i need to make this into an ebook and it'll take the content that we have. We're not asking it to create content. We're asking it to take our content and create the ebook so that I can turn it around and give it back to the clients, you know, based on the research that we've done. And so it'll set up everything. It'll create the chapter titles. It will do everything for us and, um, in that respect. And I was using for a while um, a software called Jasper, which is they had a very powerful AI behind it. It was before ChatGPT was available uh, for people to use, uh, the, the general public to use. Um, I was a part of that beta, you know, so I got an opportunity to see ChatGPT before it was released to the public. But interestingly enough, we used uh, another one called Writer. Um, and then we had one called Automatic Script that we used. And so it, these are all, um, you know, ways that we were able to produce the content that we needed to give to our clients so that they could have, you know, access to the educational materials that we have um, created. And so I just wanted to share that because I know a lot of times people are like, well, you know, gosh, you guys are putting that stuff out so fast. How are you getting out? that fast and that's how, you know, because we don't have to have you know, a huge staff. We have people who know how to prompt and we have people who know, you know, I tell them, tell it this, and, you know, and I teach my staff how they can do the prompts so that they can get the result quickly as opposed to it taking so long for them to get the result. But we use mostly free services. Um, and, but I have to say that a lot of times it is, you know, really, you know, you get what you pay for. Or because there are some services out there and, you know, it's not very accurate. They don't cite their sources. You don't know where they're getting the information. Plagiarism is a real thing, you know. So you want to make sure that you're using AI that has a credible source behind it and that you can get it to tell you where it got the information so you can, you know, verify and qualify that information before you put it out in a book. Okay, Javon, I am. I am, I am at the tail end coming up with uh, something to generate. Here. Okay, I'm here. All right. So, all right. So I want to use a prompt here. So I, I have- You can't see your screen. Okay, one second here. Okay. So I'm going to show my screen. Do I have permission to show my screen? Oh, that's the problem. Okay, sorry. Okay, thank you. All right, so I'm showing my screen now. So I have come up with a prompt to, um, so I come up with a prompt kind of just to basically, the prompt that I use is, um, you are a student attending a history class in, in the year 2050. Your classroom is not physical space, but is rather a dynamic, immersive environment within the metaverse. So it's going to, this this prompt is going to, cause this AI, which is a designer and co-pilot, to give you a illustration of what this potentially could look like in the metaverse. So I'm going to go ahead and do my prompt and send it up there. It's going to give me a response, and then it's going to provide me what I asked for. It's just typing back to me that it's responding. <laughs> Okay, so it's going to give me a scenario, a scenario, a ser I gave it a scenario, so it's going to give me, you know, what it's going to come up with. So this is going to kind of show you whether or not it's going, it gave me, it, instead it gave me web lessons, I gave it a scenario. So let's see, let's come up with a prompt. Okay. While she's doing that, I want to read what it's saying here. Hello, this is Microsoft Designer. I can help you create exciting images by presenting you with diverse, bold, fun, creative, and whimsical choices for the image elements that add some flair. However, it seems like you're not asking me to draw anything, but rather giving me a scenario to imagine. Is that correct? 
If so, I can try to generate some content based on your scenario, such as a poem, a story, or a song. What would you like me to do? Alternatively, if you want me to draw something related to your scenario, you can give me more specific, a more specific prompt, such as draw me a history teacher in the metaverse or draw me a holographic textbook. I will do my best to create a stunning visual creation for you. Please so it's you it's important when you're prompting to be really detailed. So that that's to show you an error of how you know that you have to be extremely detailed when it comes to certain AI. I mean, they can spin they'll start to spit out all kinds of things that you know, that you don't necessarily want. And you only get so many tries with this one. So I'm gonna, I just typed in a brief one. And and I, I just say, I just put in the AI, create a VR world for a classroom in 2050 in the metaverse. So from there, it's gonna give me a few different options. Now, this is exactly what it would look like if you wanted to like revamp your your logo or you wanted to um, also change your branding and things like that as well. So it works just like that. That sounds like a very interesting and futuristic request. I've created a VR. Oh, it's there it is. Okay, it's coming. It is creating. So this is what we came up with. And it gives so, you four options to run all the time? It gives you four options each time. And, that, and now that that's specific to this AI. Not all AI does this as far as how many options it gives you. So it it, it, it spit out all different types. Like it's, you're in a history class and it, it put up a holographic version of what previous history has looked like. So typically with something like this we can also go back and type in three make it a 3d model floor plan plan with make sure I'm spelling with the above concept. Okay, and I'm just gonna provide a 3D model and software to kind of give it a little more depth similar to Blender. All right. Now, the interesting thing about this, uh, a lot of times what I find is when I'm doing things graphically like this, uh, you know, I had it to create the co-working um, uh, graphic that you all see, you know, on our YouTube page. And I was very specific and it did it so fast, it made my head spin. I mean, which gave me the ability to not have to take as long to get my uh, our podcast information out there because everything that I needed, I told it exactly what I needed it to do. I gave it all of the information and it created my descriptions and all of that. Um, and I was able to plug that in based on what I told it we were going to offer. I kind of gave it some prompts, you know, to say we're going to have this on this day, this on this day, this on this day, and this is what we did today, and here is what I talked about, and I need you to create a description for me. And it has created all of those descriptions. Okay, so here we go. This is, this is what it came up with. So basically made a virtual environment that's a classroom. It also included, you know, people to show an illusion of what it typically could look like. So it gave you a little bit of a floor plan. It gave you what it would look like as a setup. Now, this is just an example, but I want to grab someone that is in the chat. Um, I'm going to grab Tony Aranda and I'm going to ask Tony Aranda, what is the color scheme and the name of his business? I'm going to use his business as an example to show you the options for branding. So drop them in the chat if you can, your business name, Tony, and your business color scheme. Okay. He could also just tell you, Javon. You tell him. I didn't know if he was like, I couldn't yeah. see him. So I didn't know yeah. if he was like just here watching or or if I could. Oh, no, him. he's here. Okay. I'm so here. I'm virtually here. I'm virtually here. 
<laughs> okay, so let's see. Create a logo. Okay, you ready? Yes. Go I actually do need a logo. Okay, uh, team, team optimum. Team. Color, um, gray, silver, a black, and uh, maybe a uh, deep candy blue. You said you said black. Uh huh. And then like a um, silver gray type and uh, deep candy blue. And what does that business serve? What's the purpose that it serves? Safeguarding people and businesses, families and businesses income and protecting the retirement income. So is this an insurance company? That's what she's trying to get. It's a financial services. Okay. Financial services. Okay. So the prompt that I used is create a logo for Team Optimum color scheme, black, silver, gray, deep cut, candy blue. This is a financial services company make, make a modern design in 3D. So let's go. Let's go. Okay, so it says I can help you create a logo for Team Optimum Financial Service Company with a modern design in 3D using color scheme, black, silver, gray, deep candy blue. I've created a logo for you based on your description, and it's going to get rid of the words. <laughs> Couldn't get <laughs> we, we don't read fast enough. <laughs> Look, I was going about how I was going, but it, it moves fast. Okay. Oh, so wow. That's now, there may be some misspelling, so you might have to go in and ask it for other options just to um, get the spelling right. But just that that's kind of what it does. Sometimes you have to go in and, you know, have it make more options and make sure the spelling is correct. So more options. Yeah, spelling's off. <laughs> Very much so. Please correct misspelling. The most likely. going to apologize. <laughs> Misspelled. I like that bottom right. It's pretty cool. Too. I apologize for for missed up business name. I've corrected the team. All right, so we have got more options coming up. This is Copilot. Yes, this is Copilot and Microsoft Designer. I'll put the link for it in the um in the chat so that you can click on it and save it. So you can go to it later. How does it? So is it one program you're prompting in, and then it both it's get used? It's not a program. Or? It's a website. It's not a program. It's a website. So you're prompting into a website for it to spit out. Uh -huh. okay, here is the. Let me see. The chat. Okay, so I am putting in the chat the um the website. So go in and copy and paste. And you and and you also also on Copilot you can get it to give it to you in a PNG export. 
as well. So it, it'll make it where you can just take it out of here and be able to put it where you want to put it from that point. Now, Javon, is, is this one where you could actually take it to Photoshop and make other changes? It has its own. So you can you can go and make modifications to it in Designer. So same as like a Canva or um, a Photoshop. So you can go in and actually make modifications to it. What happened here? Okay, take a minute to gen generate. What did it say? Your Check image? your image creation process at Image Creator. Okay. Okay, so it's okay. So we're gonna go back and we're gonna try it, try this again. So let's have more options with description. In the image creator, does it actually give you the um, the process? Uh, I mean, the the link over there. Um, no, it just it just allows you to go and take it over there. You can't make modifications to it from there, though. But yeah. say, so in other words, could we see what it already did or? Uh, Okay. But I think it's an error. Okay, so just put with description above, provide more options. So it's going to generate again. It may have been a little bit of issue because I saw that. Uh, I saw that I was a little bit glitchy too, so it might, that might have impacted what it was coming, what it came out to. Okay, so let me have it. Okay, here we go. Now we're now we're cooking with grease. Did you get that? Did everyone get that link? Yes. And when she's finished with this one, we're at we're almost out of time. I, you know, this has been great. Uh, we're really excited about, you know, being able to do this kind of thing in co-working so people can actually have, you know, that's what co-working is designed for, for us to not just share information, but to kind of show you how, okay, how do we, how do we do it? You know, how do we get from these, well, from point A to point B, you know, so um, while she's doing this on Saturday, we'll have another co-working session. Today is our last co-working session for during the week, but on Saturday, we'll have another co-working session and it'll be a hands-on session as well. You know, so please, um, if you are desirous of you know, kind of jumping in there on Saturday morning, it reminds me of what we used to do when we go to Home Depot, when they had a lot of the guys out there teaching you how to do different things. You know, how do you build a flower bed? How do you um, create uh, these kinds of, of opportunities? And so, um we will do these things every day uh, to just kind of give everybody an opportunity to you know uh, cause it to uh, be more meaningful you know to you you want to copy and can does it give you the ability to copy and paste your previous prompts to buy um i didn't i didn't copy and paste it so it's i had to re refresh the page so okay. i've been everything else all over again because i didn't copy it this time because we're going to run out of time here but okay. what I was going to say is that we can, in a future session, you know, start um, in right here where we're we're doing some um, using the designer and copilot, and then there are a couple of other um, AI softwares that you know we are, I should say, webware, you know, that <laughs> on the on the internet that you can utilize, and we want to show you how to use those too. Um, real quick, if you know, we're gonna Javon. What you can do is you can communicate with Tony offline and give him the uh, results of this particular logo. Uh, so, Tony, why don't you drop your information to Javon in a private chat so that she can send this to you when she's finished. And then what we're going to do, I'm going to ask you to stop sharing your screen for a minute because I want to share a couple of things before we jump off today. Okay. Let me, let me stop sharing my screen. Thank you, Javon. If you guys found that helpful, let's give her our virtual handshake, or not handshake, a hand clap. Yeah, yeah. That is awesome. You know, we uh, really did enjoy that, and I, um, I'm i excited about, you know, what it is that we're doing over here at Red Worldwide. Um, she's uh, continuing to work uh, feverishly to make sure that um, she gets that information out to Tony and um, we'd like to be able to use a few other of our um, uh, clients and, and others and guests, you know, as examples in what it is that we do. 
So, you know, we want to um, make sure that we're always uh, having you guys in a position where you feel comfortable enough to share. Uh, but right before we get off, I wanted to uh, make some announcements. So give me just a second. I'm going to jump back over here. And um, we have uh, coming next week um, a couple of things that I want you to be aware of. Um, we are actually uh, going to be live from Florida on Monday and Tuesday. So um, Florida... Uh, is a place where uh, we'll be a couple of times this year uh, for one for the Value Builder Summit. Uh, and so we will, you know, be giving you um, some on the spot updates about what's happening in the world of business value. Some of you all are, you know, wanting to make sure that your companies are very valuable. And so we're providing you insights to make that happen. And uh, while we're at the Value Builder Summit, there will be information that they're going to release. And I just want to share that as quickly as possible with you. So on Monday is our business structure day. So while we're talking about business structure, we will be, you know, hot off the press providing information that we're learning at the Value Builder Summit. And then on Tuesday, we're going to be talking more about legacy, but specifically about succession. And there will be a couple of um, classes at the Value Builder Summit to talk about business succession. So I'm going to try and see if I can grab um, one of the uh, industry um, experts in this area who's going to be there at the summit. He is an amazing, amazing person. Um, he uh, is also in insurance and he does um, a lot for businesses, business owners, and people who are in family businesses. He's one of the gentlemen who, to, gentlemen who told me about the book, um, Every Family's Business. So, you know, which is a great book to read. Um, I'll write that in the chat. Uh, but it's really about, you know, how do you run a family business? How do you pass it on to your kids? Um, you know, what is it that you do if the kids don't want it? Okay. So, you know, it's a, a really, you know, good book. I've also written a, a complimentary uh, book for some of the things that we're doing called Built to Pass. And it talks about how you utilize your estate planning structures to pass things down to your kids. And so there's three iterations of that book, but one specifically that deals with passing your business along to your kids, you know, and we give that away, the audiobook version of it, you know, so if you are interested, I'll get you a link for that um, so that you can have access to it and you can just listen um, or you can purchase the physical book on our on our website. Well, with that being said, thank you so much for joining us today on co-working. I hope you learned something, and I hope it was something that you can take with you. Um, if there's anything that you would like to see um, or uh, you want to learn, we'll be here next Thursday again talking more about AI and you know how we use technology. So if you have questions or you want to have us do a deep dive into any specific software or things of that nature, you know, please send us um, in the in our community. You know, send a request or send us in an email a request so that we can actually make that happen for you. But in the meantime, we will see you again here on Saturday at Coworking Live with Red Worldwide. Okay, and I've stopped the stream. Um, we're going to hop off, and uh, those of you who are going to be with us for our classes today, today is first Thursday, so if you have um, a, a link in your portal um, on Red Worldwide, if, if you have a link that allows you to come to the, um, the class for uh, limited liability or nonprofit, uh, basics, you are able to come to the live class today. We are going to be recording it. So if some of you all want to receive the recording later, please let us know. We'll make sure that you have access to that. Um, the very first class that we did last week on limited liability was amazing. And I want to tell you that you probably should get that link so you can watch the video because it was really good. Um, it explained the difference between, you know, um, the different types of companies and the, the different kinds of limited liability that you can have when you have a corporation or an LLC or an LLP. You know, so we actually broke down the differences between those three. And you want to make sure that if you are 
in business. You understand what your options are for utilizing your business effectively. How can you make sure that you're getting everything out of the business that you desire and deserve? So we did put that together. Then also we talked about becoming the nonprofit you were meant to be in the nonprofit basics class. So today at nine o'clock, that's when we'll be having the limited liability course. And um, the at 1030, that's when we'll be having the nonprofit basics course. We only do these courses or these classes once a month on first Thursday. So if you would like to get on the list, you know, there's a way to do that. Log into your um, uh, account at Red Worldwide and, you know, um, subscribe or register for a course that, you know, so that you can get a chance to attend. On the calendar page, when you log in, you'll see all of the courses that are listed there. And if you have become a member, those courses are available to you. So all you have to do is click there and um, register for the class. If you're not a member and you want to become a member, membership is only $140 a year. So, you know, you can gladly become a member and gain access to that information um, uh, as a part of your membership, along with a lot of other really, really neat things. All right. So we'll see you on Saturday if you're here with us. And if not, and you're here with us next week, we'll see you next week.